goodness faileth never I'm nothing like if I am he And he is mine forever Good morning friends or evening or afternoon you can watch this video anytime that you like we're here today to talk about our first early church leader of this class and uh, it's an early church leader who's very close to my heart and who has a very famous quote about bread thus the reason for eating toast this morning and uh, as we begin to talk about the life of saint ignatius of antioch now, before we talk about Ignatius and his life, let's talk a little bit about Antioch, the church uh, where St. Ignatius was a bishop in A.D. 115. Jerusalem and Antioch were the two main churches of early Christianity. Uh, Jerusalem, of course, being where the disciples and Jesus were doing their ministry as, as the church began, and Antioch being the main church that sent out missionaries and apostles into the Gentile world to convert new believers to Christianity. If you read Acts 11 and Acts 13, you'll see stories about how the uh, believers in Jesus were first called Christians in Antioch, and also about how Paul and Barnabas, two of the most important church missionaries of the first century and writers of the, book of the of the books of the New Testament, in Paul's case, were sent out from Antioch as leaders of that church to reach out to new congregations. Uh, there are some connections between Ignatius and Paul and Peter and John, he may have possibly known all three, or maybe just one of those. And Ignatius writes seven letters that we have today, and he mentions Paul in those letters. So it seems that Ignatius was a bishop in line with the ministry that Paul began and worked on, and that Peter and John had a hand in, in Antioch, an important church in early Christianity. The letters that we have from Ignatius were dictated by him to a church leader who accompanied him as Ignatius was bound in chains and sent to Rome. Ignatius was convicted of some kind of rebellion or resistance to the emperor and was sent to Rome for trial. In the letters, uh, Ignatius speaks to churches in the province of Syria, where Antioch was, and also to Polycarp who was a bishop in Smyrna. St. Ignatius' letters remind the churches to trust bishops and other church leaders and to follow the example of Jesus and live a life of love and connection with the Son of God who came to earth and offered his life for them. Ignatius' famous quote, as I mentioned earlier, is, I am God's wheat, and I am being ground by the teeth of wild beasts so that I may be the pure bread of Christ. A pretty intense quote. Throughout the letters, Ignatius speaks of his longing to die as a martyr for the church, even telling in his letter to the church in Rome, the church there, that he didn't want them to use political influence and wheeling and dealing to try to get him out of his trial and possible condemnation to be eaten by wild beasts in the Colosseum. When we read these lines in these letters, it can seem kind of disturbing, like maybe Ignatius has a persecution complex that somehow he thinks that being a martyr is going to make everything right in his life. But the overall picture that we see from Ignatius, from his time period, from the letters, is that his desire is nothing more than to be a public witness to the truth of who Jesus is and the life of love that Jesus calls his followers to live. Ignatius sees the opportunity of being torn apart by wild beasts in a stadium full of cheering spectators as a chance for him to proclaim that Jesus is alive, he's present, and he loves all those in attendance. Crazy ideas, but it's something that Ignatius followed through to the very end when he was torn apart by wild beasts in the Colosseum in 115 AD. No doubt to the approving applause of an audience that was upset with Christians and probably blamed them for some defeats that the Roman Empire at the time was suffering in wars. Something strange happened after Ignatius' death. His life, his love, and his witness continued. His churches and those whom he discipled in the faith continued in the beliefs for which their beloved bishop died. Ignatius is just one of the countless reminders from the early church that belief in Jesus and conviction of his resurrected life and presence in the world through the Holy Spirit was the living and breathing reality of the early Christians. My favorite quote from St. Ignatius is a quote that I have on my Facebook wall, 
which is, My dear Jesus, my Savior, is so deeply written in my heart that I feel confident that if my heart were to be cut open and chopped to pieces, the name of Jesus would be found written on every piece. It amazes me, looking at early church leaders like Ignatius, to see that the life and love of Jesus was so real and so present to them, even 80, 90 years after Jesus had uh, gone to the cross and been resurrected and been taken from this earth. The love was so palpable for them that they would say things like, if you looked at my heart, if you cut it up, Jesus would be tattooed on every piece of it. Ignatius was an intense man, an intense Christian, a believer and a leader whose witness defined the early church. The question we have to ask ourselves as we think about Ignatius is, when's the last time that you and I invested in someone else the belief that we have in Jesus? When's the last time that we were willing to let ourselves be publicly, be publicly embarrassed because of the stand that we take for the cause of Jesus? And when we ask ourselves those questions, we have to ask, where are we called to share the life of Jesus, to be willing to be made his bread for the world so that they can eat and receive life?